and I have the award presenters on the stage. One of these men goes home with a second place $50,000 check. The other man goes home with the 10th Mr. Olympia contest title and a $110,000 check. Dorian's, you know, he's retiring. Yeah, Flex yeah. Wheeler's going to be Mr. Olympia. That you're not going to be allowed to win the next Mr. Olympia. I'm sure you read in magazines and the internet all the hype. How do you feel about that and uh, what are you going to do about it? It's all hype. Yeah. Out of nowhere, because Ronnie, I think before that was like 10th like or something. Yeah, yeah, like he was seventh, like seventh yeah. place. Yeah. Then comes Ronnie and he looked like a completely different person. Uh, for me to, to win the Olympia, I had that, uh, you know, increase everything. I worked my butt off in the gym and did what I had to do. You know, the year before that, me and Ronnie have always been super close. When was the first time you took steroids? Uh, see, it was probably 1995 or 1996, somewhere in there. You were 29, 30. That was 30 years old, the first time ever. It's been talked about and he's acknowledged to it. He finally came to me, he's like, man, look, you know, I'm tired of getting my ass whooped. What you doing? You know, because Ronnie was always natural. I got a lot of information from Flex Wheeler. He gave me a lot of information. Ronnie came to me and I'm like, okay. He'd been around, he won a lot of stuff. And I'm like, man, what wonder, wonder what he's doing. I, I, I learned from people. So I, I never been effed up like, damn, I ain't gonna tell him he might beat me one day. So we sat down and I laid the whole game work down. So uh, all I can say is, hey, it's on baby. But I just watched him change, and Chad would send me pictures of Ronnie getting ready, you know? And I'm like, God dang, we still think, well, you're gonna beat him because you're shaped, just that and the other. But I'm like, Phew. I want to be the world champ. <laughs> and uh, I'd be willing to do just about anything to, do, to be the world champ. So I remember being on stage, 1998. I remember watching him and standing behind him like, God dang. In second place. I gotta be honest, we knew it was gonna happen. Flex Wheeler! And with Flex, he, he, he was quite honest with me because everything he told me, you know, worked. <laughs> but he perfect scored me in those and ended up winning by two points. The new Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman. This is Ronnie Coleman. And it's time Mr. Olympia title winner, dubbed the greatest bodybuilder of all time. A bodybuilding open era for Mr. Olympia. Yeah, and it's difficult yeah. because someone like Ronnie Coleman came around and he could hold 300 pounds and still look aesthetic because he was a, yeah. he's a one of one, you know? He's 5 foot 11, weighing 300 pounds, widely known for his dominant body parts and extremely heavy workouts. All the fun I had in the gym. Yeah, I had a I had lot of fun lifting all that heavy weight. A few years later, after winning his last bodybuilding tournament, his rigorous workout took a toll on him. What happened was they uh, put in four screws because so the discs were, you know, shifting forward and pushing up against my nerves. So they had to uh, clamp them together and, and they used these screws uh, to, to hold them together and so they wouldn't slip forward. Well, anyway, those screws end up breaking. <laughs> Ronnie has difficulty walking without crutches. Not only could I not walk, I couldn't even lift my legs. And he may never be able to walk again without assistance. Question now is, how does a man's dream? Why did you want to be the world champion? Because you're the best. <laughs> the best I always get the most respect, you know. And you want to be respected for all that hard work that you put in. Ended up becoming a nightmare. So I stayed in the hospital for like a whole month. So I didn't sleep for a little, for a little while there. <laughs> Being in pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it was real bad, you know. Join me as we go down the fitness rabbit hole, uncovering the dark world of a multi billion dollar industry. And I'll tell you what, it's crazy, scary, and much darker than you can ever imagine. Bodybuilding is probably the hardest sport in the world. Yeah, 100%. Ask any professional athlete, they get days off. They get to go home and have a meal that, you know, they can have a pizza or something. Professional bodybuilding is 365 days, 24 hours a day. I've been bodybuilding now since 21. So I'm going on 14 years now. And I don't plan on stopping. Bodybuilding is, is totally on a completely different level. It's very, very uh, challenging to add muscle mass 
while losing body fat. A lot of people just think you could just take a needle and all of a sudden you're gonna look like Mr. Perfect. Ten bags of Cheetos and three CCs. It's not. It's a test, whole. You're gonna get like, it comes no, back man. to the whole lifestyle. What I'm starting to see now is many of these bodybuilders starting to come in and they've been using a variety of substances. Terrible, don't, don't say to him that I told it. It's not good for health. I've seen people that have had severe infections where they've lost arms. We've seen deaths from these products. It's a lot to go through and it's not rewarding at all. Like I sacrificed relationships, I sacrificed uh, friendships, I sacrificed a uh, social aspect of my life, I sacrificed my family. Everybody wanna be a bodybuilder, but nobody wanna lift no heavy ass weight. The bodybuilders we see now were not always like this. In the 1800s, this was what the bodybuilders looked like, the ideal body type. Those bodybuilders were training two to three times a day, really focused on looking at their body like a piece of art, like a sculpture. But as time goes on, things started to change. Inventions were made, scientists were revolutionizing the way we see science, and gradually, humans were becoming more bigger than usual. Who would have thought this lad right here is only just 20 years of age? That's crazy. Sam Sulik is a one of one. I had a chance to be around a lot of athletes and he's 20, 21, how old is he? I think he's 21. He's a one of one. He's a Brock Lesnar for bodybuilding. As the days goes by, unrealistic expectations keep happening. We are now in the era where the impossible is becoming possible. And now, nobody wants to look real anymore. Looking from the women's perspective too, there was a time where looking slim was sexy. Then gradually we got to a stage where some women could literally kill themselves just to have a coffee body. I understand that, that I'm putting myself at risk by trying to get the biggest world's Guinness record, yes. It's just, I want to be known for something. And now it's not just about getting a coffee body, but an unrealistic coffee body. I'm living in another world that I'm not living in that world. So it's uh, pretty difficult, I think, but no one can stop me. <laughs> and that is where plastic surgery comes in. So what are we saying here? It's the 21st century. There is advancement of science and technology. It's now easier to get a banging body in a matter of weeks with the right food, workout schedule and supplements. Everything has been made easier. But no, what we all want is an unrealistic body just like our favorite Hollywood stars. And this is where it becomes darker. How do you do that? I'd like to know. How does one do that? Uh, it was crazy. I mean, aside from the training, which which was literally, it was it consumed my life for a while. Um, did you have to do anything different for this? I did. You know, this particular, the, with every role comes a different training program. But this one in particular uh, was about 12 to 14 weeks of diet, conditioning, training. I don't think I've ever quite trained as hard uh, physically or in that respect. You got in crazy shape for this movie, apparently. I did. The fact that I was so scared of it, it just kind of felt like um, that's exactly what you should be doing. Testosterone is a major hormone in a man that's responsible for muscle growth. It is produced in the body and it can either be high or low, depending on what we eat, how we sleep, our daily activities and so much more. Steroids on the other hand are drugs that have the same effect as the testosterone. Hence, we can call them testosterone boosters. It can increase your endurance, shorten your recovery times after workout and triple how fast you build muscle. And people just think that you're not going to take steroids and you get bigger. If you take steroids, yes, you will get bigger. So imagine you're given a drug that will triple your muscle mass in a shorter time. Why won't you be tempted to try it? This was exactly what Rich Piana did, but trust me, it didn't end well. For those of you that don't know, Rich Piana was an American bodybuilder and famous YouTuber. Hey, what's up everyone? Good morning. It is Sunday morning. It is chest day today, and I'm sorry about no video yesterday, Saturday, which was arm day. At an early age of 18, he knew bodybuilding was his passion, so he started going to the gym, training daily, and he became obsessed with the gym. Soon after, he met some friends in the gym and they introduced him to a drug. I was getting ready for a show as a teenager. I was 18 years old. Oh, fuck. Well, if that's what Flex Wheeler did, that's what the fuck I'm going to do. Because that motherfucker has some good ass arms. So that's what I'm going to do. So you know what? That's what the fuck I did. I injected five fucking boxes of Ecyclin in my arms. And you know what? I put on 28 pounds in eight weeks. 
you know, taking tests in DECA. Now imagine putting on 28 pounds in eight weeks with just a single drug. What would you do? Would you stop taking it or would you continue taking it? For Rich Piana, he took the latter and he was obsessed with these drugs. Did nobody hang with Rich as close as me and Chanel and Sarah? The people that are competing are obsessed and addicted and they don't have any control. It's kind of like a drug problem is an addiction that, you know, you like, yeah, I got an addiction. I'm gonna go get help. I'll get off of it. But when you can afford drugs and there's no limit, it's beyond a drug problem and addiction. It's, it's true. You know, there's people are so addicted and I was at that point. We have talks, we have battle about it. I always try to get them off the sh I get them off like two, three weeks at a time. I've tried pretty much everything there is out there to try because this is what I do. It even got as bad to where he started playing around with Crystal. I said, Rich, that's gonna f your image up. He said, yeah, I said, man, it's gonna eat your face and your teeth. Leave that shit alone. All right, uh, we sitting on this couch. It's like, all right, brother, I'm gonna leave the Crystal alone, but we just tried it. I'm like, nah, you've been using that shit. You ain't just try it. He's like, what do you think? Like, should I still mess with the oxys? People that have used it will know that. Typically people can get addicted, not addicted like a drug, but you get addicted to the result and the, how you feel, how you look and all that stuff. They can hate me if they want to, but they know I'm telling the truth. I mean, honestly, you try to stop, but how can you stop injecting yourself when you can afford the drug? And when you can't win any bodybuilding competition without taking steroids? If you want to become a professional bodybuilder, guess what? you're probably gonna have to fucking do them. So you're not gonna have a choice. He kept on taking steroids until something terrible happened. So he gone now. And if he was here, I'd still tell this story. So I don't want nobody to think that I'm trying to throw dirt on Rich name because a lot of the people that's watching, they didn't know Rich. Um, I was competing on stage and I was at a point where I was getting blown off the stage if I wasn't gonna do steroids. So I took that step and that's the road I chose. I knew his time was numbered because I knew his addiction was heavy. And he'd be like, man, man, I, I just can't. It's hard because I can afford any drug I want in any amount. I said, yeah, just because you can don't mean that you should. If you have the choice to be natural or do steroids, stay natural. There's no reason to do steroids. Um, you're only hurting your body, you're hurting yourself. It was just the drugs, I knew that was gonna be his way out. Here I am, but you know what? I'm happy with everything I chose and happy with the way everything went in my life. And um, I would have not done anything different. I'm completely happy with the choices I made of deciding to take steroids at an early age of 18. Another man with similar cases, Andreas Monza, an Austrian professional bodybuilder known for his ultra lean physique, his extremely low body fat levels and early deaths. His addiction and extreme use of steroids led him to his early grave after he had multiple organ failures at just the age of 31. Or Romario dos Santos Alves, a Brazilian bodybuilder who wanted to be the real life Hulk. His obsession to be the real life Hulk came when he was a teenager because he was insecure about his small arms. He started working out just like most teens but still, he wasn't seeing any result. He was fed up and decided to inject himself with steroids and since then, he never stopped. Então, ele tinha um corpo sarado. Barriga trincada, é, já tinha peito, costa, então era definido. Quando ele começou a usar o Sintol, eu não me assustei. Eu sempre decidi apoiar ele em tudo que ele fizesse. Nunca tive que dar palpite, ah, você não vai fazer isso. Sempre apoiei. Tirado, eu vejo grandão. Ele é o que me faz mais preocupado. I need to get him to stop injecting. I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish that. I'm really, really nervous that I can't get him to. He kept injecting himself until he got to a point he started facing horrible health challenges. My feeling is that this is coming from the products that you've injected. But more concerning was the MRI. Uh, how serious is it? That's normal muscle. This, all of this, this pure product that you've injected, it's eaten up and taken over your entire muscle. Cara, esse foi esse foi o momento mais difícil da minha vida e da dela, porque eu comecei a dar uma depressão que eu não sabia de onde vinha e eu fui afastado do serviço por conta disso. 
porque eu tentei me suicidar. Eu falei, I told him, you stop or I'm leaving. Everybody knows the dangers of steroids, but still they take them. Why? Addiction. The side effects to it can vary so greatly depending on the person. You just never know what you're going into. You know, you could do one cycle and then your natural testosterone could be dumped for the rest of your life or you have to be on TRT forever. It can make you infertile. It can lead to more risk of heart disease, you know, increase of cholesterol. It can affect your liver, your, all your organs. It can be very damaging, especially when abused. And they don't have any control. It's kind of like, like I'm in a room with 20 meth users and I'm trying to explain to them, you need to stop taking meth. Well, the, the drug dealer is going to be like, yeah, good luck with that, buddy. All right, well, who wants what? You know, like you, you really want to tax your body? You really want to take something that you really don't know? That could really hurt you. And now you're becoming a drug addict, buying drugs from someone at a gym. You're buying it from drug dealers. If you look at a brain scan of somebody who does cocaine, the difference between falling in love and that first feelings of falling in love during that brain scan and a bump of cocaine are the same. You know how many drug addicts are in bodybuilding? A tremendous amount. We've seen sudden cardiac death in young athletes who otherwise had no cardiac issues and were taking um, testosterone or other androgens. I really didn't stop until the heart attack. There has been times I've got rushed to the hospital. like. There's times I've been in the hospital my family don't even know, and I just didn't want to tell them because it was because of that. I couldn't control my anger at all. I used to bash every wall in my house, and it went from anger to depression. That's probably the most toxic thing you can put in your body. And the fitness industry knows this. This is why every month a new set of supplements is made, and it is dubbed the next big thing. Now, it's just like in the supplement industry, every month there's a new supplement. Every month there's this new fucking, you know, get incredible results quick, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's all bullshit because a year from now that shit's no longer popular. There's a new one. What's crazy though is the obsession of looking too big. For some, they want to look big and fit without putting in any work. This is why we now see some people injecting dangerous drugs in their bodies, even if it spoils the way they look. It ruins the look of the muscle. Yes, it completely it ruins it. Blurs it, soft, watery, bloated, you know, the veins go away, it pretty much, ruins every aspect of the muscle. You know, the, the bicep peak will be over-exaggerated, maybe even to a point, you know, look like a triangle. Some of the biceps look like a loaf of bread. Take all the drugs away. It's like taking the Instagram away from an influencer. They lose their shit. Meanwhile, for others, they want to look so big, they put in too much work, overloading the amount of weights their bodies can carry, just like Greg Kovac, a six feet four Canadian bodybuilder weighing 420 pounds off season, widely known as one of the largest bodybuilder in history. But his large size came at a cost, leading him to his death due to organ failure. Or Ronnie Coleman, who is currently facing multiple health issues. The fitness community is one of the united communities I've ever seen. You can literally make friends easily in the gym, gain a lot of knowledge and understanding about your body from the big guys with years of experience, and they are willing to help out. Just like everything, steroids have its benefits. Aside from the fact that using them for a long time can harm the reproductive system, reducing sperm production in males, a smaller testicle size. You, you feel not, you more feel. turned on? No, you're not. It's not just the same. No, you, you, you less turned on. Some of my teammates were on steroids. And then some of these guys would come home and be like, Ed, you're not going to believe this, but I think my ball's sharp. It can cause problems with your sex drive, help you, especially when it gets to that moment, you get have problems. Yeah, and then another guy would go, hey, you know, I just look at my back, it's full of pimples. And I look at the guy's back, it's like literally full of pimples. It can also treat problems such as allergies, asthma, arthritis, and so on. But if you want to be a bodybuilder competing in the big leagues, winning tournaments, you have no choice than to inject yourself constantly. You can't get this big just by working out and maintaining a good diet. It's no, impossible. Definitely. It's impossible without steroids. Some of these guys are just... Yeah, you cannot get to that size. You don't get to Ronnie Coleman size. You don't get to, like, Dorian Yates size. You don't get there without steroids. But if you want to live a normal life, have a good shape and physique, there is no need to inject yourself. Just one trial, and you'll be hooked for life. So I definitely recommend anyone at a young age don't even begin to touch it. If your physique is still progressing, don't even think about touching it. And if you're not thinking about doing this bodybuilding thing forever, then don't even think about touching it. You also do not need to be obsessed over supplements and eating clean. 
pre-workout can help you have a harder workout, get more vasodilation, get a little more blood flooding to the muscles, but it's not necessary, it just helps. It's about eight to 12 repetitions, getting constant blood flow to the muscles and allowing your muscles to swell in order to get that round muscle look. And that's how you win bodybuilding shows. Nutrition and how you eat is the most important thing. Fitness should be a part of your life, there's no doubt about it. It reduces the risk of diseases, strengthens your bones and muscles, and improves your ability to do everyday activities. But at the same time, it is important to know what we're getting ourselves in, because it can become toxic. The food I had to eat to win that first Olympia, I, ain't no ordinary person could have done that. Six you know? meals a day? Six meals a day. A and, pound of chicken in every meal. Yeah, and uh, I, I can't do it in a day. I have to get up in the middle of the night and go and eat and go back to bed. I mean, a lot of dietary restrictions. I didn't even eat carbs for like two months. The hardest part was eating, you know? It, you just have to eat a ton, a ton of calories. You have to eat regardless of whether you're hungry or not, you know? It's eating everything all the time. That sounds awful. See, you think it sounds <laughs> nice, but it's not just like cheeseburgers. You I mean, you have to eat like these just bland, naked pieces of chicken and rice. And it's, it's, it's not that appetizing. Right. I, we, I was eating so much chicken breast that the hardest part about it was actually chewing it all. So I would just put it into a blender, blend it all up, and just drink chicken. Do you poop a lot? And, oh yeah, after every meal, just about. After every meal? After every meal. Are you pooping six times a day? Exactly. Damn! <laughs> Remember earlier we saw the evolution of the ideal body type over the years. Now gradually, things are starting to change. Being fat and overweight is now embraced. There are a few words that I don't allow when somebody comes into my house, and healthy is one of them. It's your daily reminder that fat women are beautiful. Ask everyone to rate themselves on a scale of one to 10. A fat fucking 10. A fat fucking 10? <laughs> Well, Jaylene Cheney made global headlines this weekend after claiming fat people are entitled to extra seats on planes because they're so fat. But the body positivity movement preaches that fat is now fabulous. Now, you can have your extra seat, you can have 10 extra seats. You've got to pay for them. A question. If you were given a choice to either be fit or fat, what would you choose? Nobody will ever choose to be fat. The problem is nobody wants to put in the work. How would you say your mental health is tied into mm. your weight loss? Uh, it has definitely changed my life. I, I came from being diagnosed with major depression. And, and I mean, now I, I haven't felt depression in, in nearly two years now. And it's so incredible. Because mm. when you're obese, your brain does not work the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And you don't even remember things like for like your tasks. Mm -hmm. I just don't mm -hmm. have time. Um, so you make time. Um, it's just as simple as that. If it's important to you, if, if you know, your health is incredibly important, that's something that you can never get back once it's gone. They say, oh, eight times Olympia, but now he's dealing with injuries. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the, mm -hmm. What's your response to those people? Uh, I'm still an eight times Miss Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, yeah, I have some regret. I didn't, I didn't uh, go heavy enough. Really? Come on, he's the king. Ronnie yeah. will always be the king. I want to give it up to uh, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the greatest bodybuilder of all time. And nothing can really bring me down, you know. I'm probably one of the, the luckiest guys in the whole wide world. You know, God gave me the gift that he didn't, he didn't give nobody else on this earth.